So Unity actually comes with several of these. And now I know I'm using version 5.3.5. More recent versions have a dedicated post-processing stack, but these effects, the effects are mostly the same. So what I can do is I can go to, actually, if you are using version 5.3.5 or earlier, you can import package effects, and then these will show up in standard assets, effects, image effects, scripts. And these scripts can be added to your camera. So if I select my camera, go to my game view, and I'll add these effects. The first one I like to add is anti-aliasing. So what anti-aliasing does is it smooths out the edges. So if you look at, say, the highlights on the pistons over here, you can see how harsh and jagged they look. Anti-aliasing fixes that. And this is always the very first effect I'll try and add. The effect has quite a few presets. And so I like to stick with the start one, the first one, and then I will adjust things like the threshold until I get just the effect I'm looking for. So that's the first one, and it's a pretty cheap effect. It doesn't have that big of an impact on performance. The next effect, however, has quite an impact. Screen space ambient occlusion. Now look, however, at how much depth that adds to our scene. What ambient occlusion does is that it will take objects that are very close together and it will darken them in order to provide the illusion of contact shadows. It can help edges really stand out. So, for example, right here by the hands of the assembly crane, you see the shadows that are done there. So this can be a very cheap way to, or a very fast way to get soft contact shadows. It is a very expensive post-processing effect though. So if you're really running low on performance, you may want to decrease the samples to low. I'll keep them on medium though. And then this particular effect also lets you change other things like the radius. So as you see, so I make the radius very small. These contact shadows become harsher the intensity, so you can make it really stand out, and a few other options. Now I've seen some tutorials and some people will add the post-processing effects first and then do the lighting later. I recommend you do the lighting first though because if you want to distribute your game to a variety of target hardwares, whether very high-end graphics cards or something a little bit more on the budget side. Giving the player the ability to change options about which of these effects they want is very easy. As you see, I can just enable or disable these scripts. It's not as easy to do that with the lighting. So you want to make sure that your scene looks good with just the lighting and the textures before you start using your post-processing effects because when it comes to performance, these are much easier to change than the lighting itself. So with that, that's my ambient occlusion. And then what I will do is I will add on a bloom and I'll go with the optimized version. And what that does is that just makes the bright items glow. And I want that so that these blue energy canisters have a bit more radiance to them. Now, when you're talking about bloom or glow, you have something here called the threshold. The threshold is the minimum brightness that a light needs to achieve before it will contribute to the bloom effect. So the higher this is, the brighter something needs to be before it will contribute. The lower this is, as you see, lower light values will contribute more to the effect. So what I'll do is usually a little bit of a higher threshold, but then a higher intensity. You don't want to lean too hard on this, though. 
So the next one I'll add will be a curves based color correction. So if I open this up, you'll see that we have control over the three different color channels. So if I select that, we have an S curve here. And the way this works is it's just like the curves editor in Photoshop or After Effects. What's happening is that we have a line like this, and that is the map of the light and dark values. So this is saying that a value of one, that is maximum brightness, will still be one. Value of 0.5 will be 0.5, and zero will be zero. If I add a key, what this is saying now is that what started out as a lightness value of 0.5 will be brought down to a 0.4. So that'll make everything a little bit darker. An S curve says that areas that are bright will be made even brighter. As you see, the curve is raised in the high values, whereas dark values, values below the 0.5 mark, will actually be lowered a little bit. As you see, if I compare those two, so what an S-curve like this does is it effectively increases the contrast. As you see, we now have a very high contrast image, and because our image started out a little bit on the darker side, it looks very, very dark. Too dark. So let's fix that. So these are applied per channel. So if I go to, say, red, first thing I'll do is I'll just make them all linear. So now it looks exactly the same. So I'll start with the red channel, and I'll say, okay, I'll add a key, I'll bring that up so the bright values are going to be a little bit more red, and then maybe the dark values will stay kind of the same though. Okay, very subtle effect. Now the green channel I'm going to mess with a lot. So I'll add in a key. I'm going to make the dark values a little bit more purple by lowering the green channel. That makes everything purple. And then the mid values are going to be more green. Then I might select this key at the top, right click it, and go to flat, and that'll give me this little tangent control. And if I change that to free smooth, that'll give me tangents over here as well. Okay. And then I'll go to the blue channel. Hopefully you can see it's a very subtle adjustment. Maybe I'm, I might tweak the green values a little bit more. All right, now you can really see the impact that has. Then we can also just generally increase the saturation. Don't want to overdo that though. There we go. Then next, I will add on a depth of field. This is also a very expensive effect. Let me see if I can't make this a little bit bigger. Okay. Now the depth of field comes with a really cool checkbox here for visualize, and it is the black region that we are focusing on. So the focal distance is just how far away from the camera we're focusing. We want to focus on the ship, and we can even tell it to focus on a specific transform, but I'm not going to do that just yet. And then the size is how big the focus region is. So if I so with a very low size, we're focusing on a very narrow range, whereas with a high size, we can focus on a lot. And then the aperture is basically affecting how blurry everything is. And then what I can also add is I'll add on another one. I'll call this one vignetting. Open that up. And what vignetting does is you see it a lot in film, and that just darkens the corners. 
So as you see, makes the corners a bit darker, helps us focus on the center of the image. And then I also like to blur the corners a little bit. Hopefully you can see the effect that's having. And then aberration is how the red, green, and blue color channels split apart around the corners of the image. So as you see, as I increase the aberration, you'll see how the red and green channels are quite distinct now. So just a subtle effect. And then one more while I've got you here. So I can also add on noise. Actually, remove that one. First one, noise and grain. So as you see, noise just helps, again, make everything look a little bit more grounded. It simulates the look of it being shot on film rather than digital, which can actually look a little bit more natural to the eye. So you see we have a lot of control here. We can add in color, or we can also change whether we want this to be bright noise or dark noise. I'm probably going to make this brighter noise. Don't want it to be too strong, though. We don't want it to be overpowering. But you can see it especially in the bright areas like around here on the arm. And so with all of those, now if I hit play, you can see what our scene looks like. We're doing okay on frame rate, could probably be a little better. But that just about does it for this tutorial. That is some high quality lighting and using post-processing effects in order to make your scene really stand out and look as high a quality as possible. I hope you found this tutorial useful or at the very least interesting and thank you for watching.